Biodiversity is a major, all-encompassing measure of the health of our ecosystems. The presence of flourishing biodiversity means people are taking care of the oceans, land, their resources, and that the future is secure for their children. Withdrawal from biodiversity and nature is linked to increasing mental illness around the world. Indeed, reconnecting to nature is a primary reason tourists enjoy St. Lucia. The island, like many in the Caribbean, is known for having a rich biodiversity. The country is home to five species of endemic plants and five species of endemic animals, meaning these are found nowhere else in the world. Under the country's 1980s Wildlife Act, five mammals and reptiles and 46 birds are protected. In 2009, a countrywide biodiversity survey found native species to include 945 plants, 137 types of ferns and mosses, close to 60 resident bird species, 17 reptiles, 2 amphibians, 10 mammals, and over 1,000 insects. The island also boasts rich marine and coastal environments supported by mangroves, seagrasses, and coral reefs around much of its coastline. Based on certain indicators, these natural assets will be most difficult to manage into the future. There is practically no updated population numbers on biodiversity. If you are not measuring something, you cannot manage it. In this case, in terms of priority, plants and animals are not high on the island's agenda. This is a basis for dismal scenarios of the future. There is precedence to demonstrate the possibility of this future. We can use the cases around the Amazona versicolor and white-breasted thrasher to show this. With the loss of natural forest to banana production during the 1960s to early 1990s, the population of these birds declined. It was only because of breeding programs that we still have them in the wild today. Their populations show a steep recovery as abandoned banana plantations return to natural forest cover. This scenario of biodiversity loss, applying to multiple species, could repeat itself in the absence of careful planning and enforced regulations to guide farming over the next 5 to 10 years. The high likelihood of reintroduction of a new phase of monocropping in the form of cannabis and related biohazards to guard against crop failures would seal the fate of many species. Currently, nearly a third of St. Lucia is forested. Up to 116 square kilometers is protected or close to 15% of the island. Another 34 square kilometers of the coastlines are also protected areas. The problem with forested lands and natural coastlines in St. Lucia is that they are increasingly being fragmented due to farming, livestock grazing, harvesting for charcoal, and introduction of exotic trees. This destroys habitat linkages, structure, and scale of forests which otherwise allow native wildlife and plant species to thrive. A lot of um, persons go out to harvest and cut down um, forest species such as mahogany, antique trees are being cut down and no effort is made to replant these trees. And so if those persons doing so would plant other trees or allow, um, allow the younger crop, crops to come, the, the younger trees, sorry, to come up to an, a juvenile state before the mature ones are covered so that the, the forest cover is, is set, or at least there is some sort of coverage for the soil, then that aids in, in not, just, not just reducing um, land degradation and desertification, but it also causes an improvement in the amount of water that is, is, is being, um, being stored in the soil. In addition to these practices, tourism development along the shoreline has been a major contributor to habitat destruction. It occurs despite the country's Planning Act restrictions against this. The tragedy here is often that the Planning Act is circumvented or 
suitable plans approved for construction by the planning department in the Ministry of Agriculture ignored by developers. The absence of enforcement of a national land use plan sees the destruction of natural habitats moving quickly in St. Lucia. Major threats to species survival have been identified in the 2014 Fifth National Biodiversity Report for St. Lucia. Amongst these threats are habitat destruction, overexploitation, pollution, climate change, increasing storms, and invasive species. These factors have been attributed to the near extinction of several species at various points in St. Lucia's history, including key flora such as the Latani and animals such as the Amazona versicolor and white-breasted thrasher, as mentioned before, as well as the racer snake and whiptail lizard. The Amazona versicolor came close to extinction around years 1970 and 1990, but a breeding program saw the population rebound. Similarly, the white-breasted thrasher population, which in 1994 was close to lost, rebounded under another breeding program. Due to protected areas increasingly weakened forest structure from habitat destruction, confined and partial success of reforestation projects to sustain parts of the island, and increasing storm intensities, breeding programs may not be enough to ensure these and similar at-risk species survive in St. Lucia, over the next 20 to 50 years. Introduction of foreign animals to the island has resulted in the near extinction of native species, such as the racer snake and the whiptail lizard. The St. Lucia racer is now believed to be the rarest snake in the world and is only found on the less than one square kilometer mile island of Maria Major off the southern coast of St. Lucia. In 1850, this non-venomous snake was reported as the second most common snake in St. Lucia. However, after the introduction of the Asian mongoose, by 1936, the racer snake was thought to be extinct. Numbers were wiped out by mongooses, rats, opossums, and other invasive animals. A captive breeding program is underway in an effort to increase world numbers to 500 by 2025. There has already been success through similar efforts with the whiptail lizards. However, as the racer is currently found only on Maria Major, they continue to be at risk of predation from rats and other animals. Added to this, without proper management and reintroducing the racer to the mainland, projected intense storms could wipe out the species in the coming decades. The racer snake, yes, we have great concerns for the racer snake on Maria Island because that's the only place where they exist. And if anything happens there, if rats, for example, and get onto Maria Island, that population would be lost. Another reptile, the Fudilos, once thought to be abundant throughout St. Lucia, is under threat. The snake has venom capable of providing medical benefits. Due to management of forested areas, its habitat has been reduced to at best 50 square kilometers and is considered severely fragmented. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature listed the Fudilus as vulnerable in 2019. Yet, it remains unprotected in St. Lucia. Despite its value to the pharmaceutical and medical industries, the Fudilus is frequently killed by farmers, invasive predators, and habitat loss. Once again, deforestation may result in the complete loss of this potentially economically beneficial species unless breeding programs take place and unsustainable deforestation practices cease. Efforts are being made in St. Lucia to protect biodiversity. However, beyond the implementation of legislation, written reports, planting of trees, and in times of crisis, introducing wildlife breeding programs, this appears to be a difficult task. This map from the Action Plan for Implementing the Convention on Biological Diversity's Program of Work on Protected Areas depicts St. Lucia in its entirety. It shows the extent of all territories declared as managed to preserve biodiversity and or proposed for the status in and around the island. In addition to forest reserves, 
According to the St. Lucia Coral Reef 2016 scorecard, about 41 square kilometers of coastal zones are designated marine managed areas. Up to 350 square kilometers more are proposed for this classification. Observations on the ground lead to the conclusion that this image is, for the most part, only a grand idea. The reality is that enforcement of protection regulations and area management plans is very much lacking. Ecosystem preservation and restoration is happening as in the case with the Ionola project, but overall, lack of enforcement of biodiversity conservation measures at the national programmatic scale stays as the driving force of scenarios of the future.